Hey there, everyone. Happy Monday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And I work all the way through projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process and ask questions and just join me along the whole way. Uh, so tonight, you guys, we are going to prep our quilted squares for the quilt as you go process. So if you remember last week, we finished up our four groupings of squares. So we have four pieces like this. They are fully quilted. We finished all the quilting last night. So that means that it has a front, it has the batting, and it has the background all sewn together with some fun patterns. We were doing some practice of free motion quilting. So we have four of those done and I'll show you guys those again. And, and now we are going to prep them for the quilt as you go process. So here's part of the quilt that I have done. See it's four it's those four blocks like what I just showed you, but I got three groupings of them sewn together. And basically this is a finished quilt at this point. You know, it's got, <laughs> it's the front and back. Uh, we don't have to quilt it because we're pre-quilting it basically. And what we're doing is we are connecting those groupings of squares with this binding on both sides. So we'll get to that this week as well. But first, what we have to do is we have to trim them to the 13 inches. Uh, how we're doing it is uh, 13 inches and I'll show you that in a, in a bit here. We gotta trim them all down because right now, some of them got a whole pile of fluff around them yet. So once we get that trimmed, then we can start uh, prepping our sashing pieces and our, and our little binding pieces that will go in the middle of these. So, uh, so I'll walk you through that process as well. So, all right, you guys, I am going to uh, flip you around. Oh, does it look dark here? I think, I think all the lights are the same. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna, oh, you know what? I don't have the, the light over here on, that could be. Um, but I'm gonna flip you guys uh, over and we'll get started. Oh, it could have been longer. The weekend, Shauna. Yeah, <laughs> I hear ya. <laughs> okay, so here, um, here are the four blocks. So we have this one. I think we'll trim that one first. Then we got this, these four here. This is a little poofier. The poofier ones might uh, cause us some issues. That's what we're gonna uh, find out. So we'll do the skinny ones first. Here's another thin one. Oh, I forgot we did all those little circles. That's pretty from the front. I forgot. I, I'm so used to, I like looking at it from the back. But here you can really see those circles on there. So that's nice. Uh, and then, oh yeah, and then the pineapple guy. That was fun to do too. A lot of practice. Practice on some squiggles there. Okay, so let's trim those out. So my uh, square, like ultimately when these are all together, uh, mine are gonna end up being 13 inches uh, when I cut it. So ultimately within the quilt, they will be 12 and a half inches once, once it's sewn into the quilt because you, you lose a quarter inch for every seam allowance. Um, so because, because I have this sashing, that's why it ends up being 13. If you don't have sashing in between your blocks like this, then your blocks will end up being uh, 12 and a half inches. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, because you have six and a half inch blocks that you're sewing together. And I get, I'm get i adding that extra half inch for the half inch sashing. Uh, sashing is just like a border in between blocks on a quilt. All right, so uh, this should be 13 inches. Oh, there's my mom in Arizona. <laughs> they are on a, a, a little vacation there. Okay, so... Uh, the dumb thing about this is, and this is gonna, this is the part that freaks me out the most, this cutting. Um, I do not have a big enough ruler for this. So I have a 12 and a half inch ruler. A 13 inch ruler would be amazing at this point, but uh, that's not what I have. So, um, so this is 12 and a half. I wanna kinda mark the center, um, the center 
so I can do the center like right here so I know like where to shift it back and forth. So let's look at, uh, gosh, I really don't like this ruler in general. It's time for me to get another uh, bigger ruler, I think. But all right, I'm going to actually, let's see. I wonder if I can draw on this. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to just take a piece of tape and I'm going to like point it at the center. I don't think I have a pen that can like a Sharpie or anything that will go over. All right. So the center of this whole square is this blue. So I would need to go over another quarter inch um, down if I'm adding, if I'm adding another half inch to this ruler, then I would need to add a quarter inch to the center. So gosh, this is, doesn't even have those markings on. So let's, let's just go like this. <laughs> oh, we're getting really dumb here now. All right. So I'm just putting, I'm lining up these two rulers on the quarter inch markings. All right, so right there. Oh, that didn't get on very well. Ooh, my hands are flubbery today. Okay, so right there is a little bit closer to the center where, where it's pointing right at that tip right there. So I'm going to align, let's just test this. I'm going to align that tip. I'm going to use the center of um, our little cornerstone there, our little center square. I'm going to use that as the center. So I'm pointing towards the center and let's just do a, a little check here. So this looks like it's pretty well on the edge. Remember the good thing, I mean, we can already see that this was a good idea. Um, remember on these blocks that we have embroidery and applique, a lot of times the designer or in the book, they've made us do the blocks a little bit bigger because they know we're gonna cut it down. I did not cut down the outside edges um, just in case the quilting shrunk it up too much. And that was a good move because look, I have, I have a little bit of an edge here, but just barely in some spots. Um, so that's good. All right. So then if we rotate it around and if this was still the center, oh, see, so you know, this is where it's far off. This is where the quilting is, is going to get us. Um, right here, we may need to add another little white strip. Eh, we'll see how it goes. All right, let's just give it a go. I suppose I could err on the side of going a little bit more this way since I do have like a tiny bit more leeway. I think we will do that. I'm going to, I'm going to give myself a little bit more leeway down and over because this one, this block, since this is pieced, I don't have that extra. So I'm actually kind of short on this edge and this edge, it looks like, just because the quilting um, pushed it quite a bit. So I'm going to just err on the side of going a little bit over and a little bit down. You know, I'm hoping that it won't be so obvious that you actually see that in the quilt, but it might give us enough leeway to not have to add a piece of white here. All right, let's just, let's just go right like here, I suppose. All right. Oh, and then I'm also going to kind of align my ruler to try and make sure that it's straight. So I'm taking a line and, and putting it with this, with the sashing. All right. And I think it's going to be right there. So again, I'm, my, uh, ruler is only 12 and a half inches and I need 13. So in theory, I need a half inch more ruler here for my straight edge, but I'm going to just wing it. I mean, it's just a half of an inch. If this was like an inch or more, I would get another ruler out here and I'd, you know, add, add to my ruler just so I have a long enough piece. But since it's just that half inch, I'm going to just wing it. Same with, same with this corner up here. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know what? The middle sashings, they might be off. Oh, you're right. They might be off just a hair. You know what? We better stick to the, it being in the center. Ugh. All right. That means we will probably have to add a little edge here. 
But yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, we're gonna go right about there. It's gonna be especially apparent on the bigger ones, I think. Oh, that'd be cool, Leslie Ann. I've never, I've never gotten glass cut or plexiglass cut anywhere before. And I was actually, I was having a conversation with that the other day with someone. Oh, <laughs> um, I was talking to my husband this weekend that, um, oh gosh, with the basement. So we haven't had more water in the basement, thank goodness, because it, it froze again outside and then, um, you know, tons of snow melted. So we don't have as much melting and it's not raining anymore. So um, the water is not coming in all over the place in the basement. But um, when it was, we had to, we had some portfolios, like art portfolios in the basement. Um, you know, my husband and I went to art school and just our old portfolio. And so we brought, we had to bring all that upstairs because they had, they got water on them. So we brought it up and it's stuff that we haven't looked at in ages and ages. Um, and we're like, oh, we should frame some of this stuff. So we're like, oh, but we don't know how to get glass from anywhere. So we gotta, we gotta figure that out. All right, so we did one edge here. Now in theory, I should be able to put this little mark in the center again. And look, we do, we, get, we did get our half inch. So I just need to line up against a straight line again. Actually, at this point, I should probably get another ruler here and align it with this edge just so we're, we're totally square. There, so a half inch. Um, so this is a nice cut edge. So I put that on a half inch and then if I butt up this ruler, then I know it's gonna be square. I'm not gonna like wobble it a little bit, you know? Um, so I'm gonna do that. And I suppose I could do a half inch down here, but I'm gonna just eyeball our center again. And actually, you know what? I should probably just double check we're a half inch at the bottom. Getting picky again. All right, about there. So that looks good. So that is our next cut. And then we should have our 13. Oh, Jane, that is a fabulous idea. Okay, I'm so doing that. Go to Goodwill and buy old frames and we can always paint the frames and stuff. That's a good idea. I know we can take it to a framer, but the thing is we have, we have so many like little fun things or like, you know, every once in a while we'll pick up something goofy from somewhere or just even like a found object that we think is really cool that we think that would be really neat just framed. And uh, it, the idea of having to go to a framer for every single one of those, ooh, I just totally shifted this, boo. Um, we're trying to avoid, avoid that. So we were talking about, oh, we should find if there's a framing class in town or something. I know you'd have to get, you'd have to get all the gear, like you'd have to get like a miter saw or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you would need, but I thought it'd be kind of a, a neat a neat thing to learn at some point. All right, last cut. This always makes me the most nervous, this cutting, especially with something like this. All right, but I think we got it here, you guys. I think our system is working a little slower, but um, it's, it's working with this 12 and a half inch ruler. Oh, practically all of your stuff is in the Goodwill thrift store frames. Yeah, they have like really big frames and stuff there too. I'll have to check that out. All right, so here is the deal. So because we had that extra for all the embroidered and applique blocks, look, I, I, I get to go right up to the edge. So that's perfect. Um, same with this one and same with this one, a lots of edge. However, this pieced one, because of the quilting it takes up so much fabric, like, you know, all those extra little bulky poofs, that adds up to like millimeters and millimeters. So um, here, we got a pretty good big space there and here, um, which is gonna be a problem, I think, this whole time with these, these six and a half inch blocks. So I don't know, this is borderline. It's not quite a quarter inch yet. I may be able to just catch this edge when I sew. So I might not add to this, but if it goes over that quarter inch, or if I don't think I'll be able to catch that fabric at all, 
um, then, then at some point I may have to add some white fabric, like just sew a little piece of white on here and flip it over. Um, but I think we're good with this. Look how clean it looks though, cut down. It's just always feels fancy once it's cut. All right, that's one. We got three more to go. Hopefully we got the process a little bit better. I need a giant rotating mat too, that'd be cool. All right, next up. Um, all right, this is um, a different batting. It's more of like a polyester type um, batting. Uh, but it's still thin, so this should feel awfully similar to the one that we just did. So I think we got the system down a little bit better now, so let's let's try and do it. All right, again, I'm going to use that little point as my center. I'm also going to align this blue line with my sashing. Gosh, yeah, these are some pieced ones. This is that one where we where it ended up being a little small for some reason. I, I can't quite figure it out, but um, this, uh, we may have to just sew a piece of white on the top of this one. So, I don't know. This one, this one may need a little bit of repair, but I think um, you won't be able to notice when it's in the final quilt. It'll just look like part of the quilt. Um, all right. I'm getting paranoid again. All right, I think we're good though. Again, some of these we have uh, that extra that extra edge, just because they were not pieced blocks, they were blocks where we on purpose uh, left a big edge to them. All right, I'm gonna try and turn this again without moving the ruler. I need a slightly larger space to make this act like a rotating cutting mat. All right, I think we got it though. I'll show you what we mean here when, when I'm done cutting. This one, I yeah, this one might need a little white strip, I think. Okay, extended that. Um, okay, rotate it again. And now we rotate the ruler as well, because we're going to do that other side, that 13 inches instead of the 12. And let's get the ruler here to, to make sure it's straight, and it's a half of an inch. Oh, jeez. Right, half inch. It's gonna have to move down. Needs to scooch down a bit more. All right, that looks good there. Let's get this end again. Ooh, let's push it back. All right, I think I'm calling it right there. Oh no, this edge is good. So this edge, um, you know, we have this applique one, so we had extra there and it looks like, yeah, it looks like we had some wide. This was that funny block. It was a little wider than we needed it to be and a little shorter than we needed it to be. So it's acting a little funny in this case. All right, extend that. Okay, next one is done. Okay, so here we go. Cute, oh, it just looks fancy cut down. So here are, here's what I'm talking about here. So on top here, like this is, this is really close to a quarter inch. So, um, gosh, all the way along the edge. Oh man, I wonder, God, it barely, it might, again, it might just barely work. Oh, it might just barely. Uh, it's cutting it kind of close. So that's, I don't know. We may want to, yeah, you know what? I think, I think for this one, um, I might want to cut a long white strip and then flip it up. So like, so like, you know, like right sides together and then press it and then trim it again. I can use like the back as a guide here, but I think we might need to cover some of this batting on the front. So I'm gonna set this one aside. I'm gonna just, um, or we'll just have to remember the clock one we need to sew a little bit yet. 
that one's a little too close to comfort. And I suspect these ones, these ones with the really puffy um, batting, this is a double layer of batting to make it extra poofy, which I love that look. It's looking just so fun. This almost probably doubly sucks in. So I'm guessing these are much smaller than the 13 inches. So we may need to add some white border, some white strips around this too. You sewed on some white strips that you think will be within the, oh, seam allowance. I'll have to read the rest of your, I can't see the whole part of your comment, Jane. Um, all right, let's, let's do this again. Oh, this side's looking pretty good. Oh, maybe not so much down here. Eh, it's just, that's how this is gonna be, I think. I think that's gonna be our struggle the whole time with this, um, these cool as you go blocks. So we'll see. Sometimes we'll have to add an extra. Um, oh, there's some past discussion of beginning the black with quilting with stay stitching. I'm not sure. I'm, I know what you're saying and I'm just, I'm not 100% sold on that. So um, what we're talking about, I'll, sh I'll tell you once I do this other cut, just so we're square here. Um, before we quilt, so we, we've quilted all these, right? Um, we, we pinned it all together, like the backing fabric and, and the batting and the front fabric. So uh, there is an idea that, that we could have sewn all the way around the outside before doing any of the other quilting. And then it might be, it might have held the 13 inches. I'm just not so sure we could have gotten it flat enough to do that beforehand. Like I almost think quilting it flattened it more than us trying to stay stitch it beforehand. And if I, if I, if I stitched it down here, but I was sewing and then sewing and sewing, then I might've ended up with like a big area of bulk fabric that would pleat or something. So I am, I am not positive or maybe I just, maybe I just don't have the right technique for that, but that, um, I don't know if that would have worked in, worked uh, for me, I guess. I'm sure there's some technique out there because this is a very popular style of quilting, this quilt as you go technique. And I'm sure, sure some peeps have come up with some really good solutions. So maybe before we do the next set of blocks, I'll have to dig into that a little bit. This is about as good as it's gonna get. Ooh, so poofy. All right. Oh, you do it with a basting stitch, um, tacking it all down. Yeah, we'll have to try it. I mean, we'll just have to try it just to, to see if it works for us or, or, or not. Then we'll at least know. But yeah, that's a good idea. We should, we should do that. Oop, here we go. Okay, so check this out. This one, we def this is for sure over uh, a half inch, or not a half inch, a quarter inch there. So um, this will for sure grab a little white strip. We might even, like we have our little sashing strips. I might just be able to sew this onto here and flip it around and trim it. Yeah, we'll probably just do that with an extra. I, I pre-cut a bunch of sashing strips, so we might just be able to use, use a few of these. Sew it on, flip it over and trim. Yeah, I think I think that's gonna be our process for this. So this one too, we'll we'll do a few repairs tonight, hopefully. Yeah, because we just have, yep, we just have one more to trim. Yeah, so we'll we'll trim and then we will do our little repairs. So you also based using a basting stitch, Catherine. All right, next time let's do let's do a basting stitch around the edge. Those are fun to do anyway. I like I like like real basting stitches where where it's not with pins or glue or anything. It's with just needle and thread. Um, 
yeah. So with our next block of four that we do, so remind me, next time we do sew together a block of four, which will probably be a little while from now, um, we will try basting it, hand basting it down, and then seeing if that helps uh, during the quilting process at all. I mean, I suppose it would. Ugh, okay. There's an edge. This one's cute little, little pineapple. Yeah, I don't think adding that little white bit is gonna take away from the quilt. I, I doubt you'll even know it's there. Especially uh, some of these have a white background. And my sashing is white, so it's gonna bleed into white. So, I mean, I'm not sure you would ever know. Ooh, this one's gonna need it too, for sure. All right, um, flip. All right, let's center that and let's get our little, little ruler here again just to make sure I'm, I'm square. So half inch. All right, half inch there. What about down here? Yeah, we could try that. Basting, we won't baste just the edges, we'll baste the whole thing. Then we won't use pins at all, really. We could baste, yeah, from the center out and then around the edge. That might, that might be a good way to do it. All right, I think we're fine here as well. All right, last bit of trimming here. I'm only going to add those white strips, those like, repairs, I suppose you could call them. I'm only going to add those where it's very obviously over a quarter inch. Some of them are close, but I think the machine will be able to grab them still, so I'm not going to worry about those. And luckily I can just use those white sashing strips. I think those will, those will be just big enough. Okay, so there we are. Our last dude there. Here are all our little fuzzles. <laughs> this would be good for stuffing for something. I don't know. I don't know if I'll save any of this, but there you go. That's what we cut off. And that's going on the floor for now. <laughs> all right. And now I want to kind of assess where we need repairs. Fortunately, this kind of looks like it might need it there. Like right here, it looks like maybe it's a quarter inch. I'm not sure it's just about quilting near the seam allowance. I think every bit of quilting is using up fabric. Like every time I quilt, you know, a line and next to another line, it makes a little bump. And that bump has, you know, it has distance to it, I guess. You know what I mean? It, um, it has mass, so that's pulling from the edge. So it's pulling in all directions with every stitch that we make, really. Um, so I think just not leaving the edge, I don't, I don't think that'll really affect things. All right. Oh yeah, I was measuring how close to a quarter inch. Yeah, this, this right here, we're gonna have a problem. This one I might need a little longer than um, the little sashing strips that I have. Yeah, maybe I'll just sew two together <laughs> instead of cutting anything new. All right, I'm going to, um, we'll just um, do these one at a time. So I'm going to move all this and I'm gonna get my sewing machine back here. It actually did not go anywhere. I just shimmied it off to the side. And um, well, let's get our sewing table. Now that we got all that dumb cutting out of the way, I feel better. <laughs> all right, here's my sew adjustable table. Um, I do have to switch the presser feet back since we're done with quilting, um, but we can do that now. All right, let's get these fellers up here. Oops. Okay. Down here, there is our Westerly foot still on the machine. 
Oops, sorry, you guys. Tighten it up. Okay. Let's take that off. In theory, I suppose I should switch needles too, but I'm not going to do that. All right, there's there's that foot. Here's if you guys want to see it a little a little closer. It's pretty dusty now. We've been quilting for a while, but um, see it's a little wider, so uh, you can butt up a ruler right against there. And it actually has plastic in there with a little hole. I can actually put yarn and other thread in there, and it can stitch down that thread, which is pretty cool. So that's the that's the Westerly uh, decorative stitching um, ruler foot, uh, and it, and it's a quarter inch from the needle to the edge all the way around, which is cool. Then you always know you're at a quarter inch. All right, this guy back on here. All right, easy peasy, we are ready. All right, so let's assess these again. All right, yeah, so this one, this one, the bottom edge needed it, and actually it was it was pretty long, so I'm actually going to Frankenstein these together. I'm gonna just take two of my sashing pieces. These are pre-cut, um, well, not pre-cut, I, I pre-cut them uh, a while ago, so we could use them as the sashing in between our quilt blocks. Ooh. Oh, I gotta turn my, <laughs> make sure my feet are going forward. They were still off from from quilting. All right, I'm just grabbing, I'm just grabbing um, a, another leader. Remember I, I had cut these squares so I could, I could, um, instead of just using any old scrap fabric for a leader, now I'm going to be sewing all of these into a little, little half square triangles. All right, so there is that. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna just open this up. I suppose I could press this, but I'm gonna just, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna press it because we're gonna need to get the, um, the iron going here because once we sew these on, Got my big pile of stuff here. Once we sew these, uh, sew them to the pieces here, we'll have to press them. So let's let's just get it prepped for that right away here. Got my little pressing mat here. I think I'm gonna also press these open, press this open just so there's there's less bulk. This probably hasn't had quite enough time to warm up, but it'll probably get us through. All right, so we're pressed open. All right, so now I am going to basically this edge that I want to repair. This is the only edge I'm going to repair here. I'm going to just put right sides together, and I'm not I'm not going along the edge. I'm going along the edge of the fabric that I want to repair. So I'm actually going to sew this at a bit of an angle. I'm going to follow follow this edge of the fabric. This is almost as if we're foundation um, paper piecing. So again, not the edge of the piece, but I'm going along the edge of the fabric I want to repair. Get in there. Oh, and I just thought of something. This might be the time to get the walking foot going too. So the walking foot, this is just a normal quarter inch ruler. Uh, the walking foot helps move both the top and bottom. But actually I think we're, we're fine. It's used a lot for like straight line quilting and, and all that.
Okay, and then we're just gonna go off the edge here, but I'm gonna get another one of my quilt squares. Okay. So I'm just, instead of drawing a line down the middle, I'm just kind of putting a diagonal in a fold. And they don't have to be perfect. I'll trim all these down later. So let's snip that off. And this one. All right, and then back over here again. So here's what's gonna happen now. See, so it's kind of at an angle because I'm I went it along the edge of the fabric, not the edge of the square. And now when I flip this over, now I will have enough fabric there all of a sudden, um, which is good. And then we'll trim trim it down again. So I'm gonna just get my ruler, or not my ruler, my iron, and press these this way. So a little repair that in the end no one will probably notice. All right, so let's get, let's get the, this guy up here. And I'm gonna just use the edge of my block as a guide. And we're gonna just trim off that extra. All right, that looks good. All right, that's the first little edge. And a little bitty edge here. I'm not even gonna use the ruler. There we are. So let's see how that, let's see if that worked. Okay, so there we go. We just kind of filled in the edge there. Now remember, we're gonna cut off another quarter inch of that. So this will just be, ultimately this will be just a tiny sliver of white that will actually be butted up some against some more sashing. So I'm not even sure you'll even realize what happened here. But we'll for sure not have any batting show because um, we got that quarter inch filled in there. Then up here, oh, do we need it up here too? Maybe not on this one, but this one I think we do. This one seems a little smaller though, so I'm going to just use one of my sashing pieces. So we'll just line this up here because I think from here on we're okay. All right, so I have to do another repair on this guy. Yeah, we're gonna definitely try the basting, the um, the thread basting this, uh, just because this is annoying that we have to do this. Will you make batting for that extra piece? Batting. I'm not quite sure what you mean. For what extra piece? All right, I'm just gonna, again, I lined up the edges. I'm just gonna sew along the edge here. The extra piece, oh, do you mean um, the edge of well, do you mean like the edge of the whole piece? Like the piece that we added just now? Um, that doesn't actually need extra batting because it's already got the batting from, from the edge of the fabric. So we already have, we already have extra batting right here. So that's, that's the batting. Um, we don't, it's already built in. So we're just, um, it's just because our fabric on top of the batting was too short. So what we're doing is is like extending the fabric. So then we flip this over and the batting the batting's already there. I get it. I get it now. All right, so again, let's oop, got to snip snip the little other piece off here. Let's flip this over again. That's why you wanna make sure that you're aligning your edge to the fabric, not to the batting, because the batting is okay. The batting is um, the right size. It's the fabric on top that's not. So we're just, we're just um, 
covering up, um, we're covering it up and then trimming it to the batting that's, that's there. So yeah, the batting is what's good. The uh, top is what's, what's bad. Okay. There we go. We covered that up. Now let's, let's trim it down. Again, I'm just going to use the back here as a guide. What is the stitch length when free motion quilting? I do not, it's not set at a stitch length at all. So um, the stitch length is determined by how you move it, like how fast you move it with your hands. So like you'll see when you look up close on mine that there's quite a bit different stitch length. So let's see, I don't know if you can tell. Um, like here, it's pretty close together. I mean, that's very close together. Whereas, let's see if I, oh, like here, here it's a, a bit wider. So here you go, you can see really little stitch length there. And then it got way wide here because I probably went too fast or something. Um, so that's, that's something I need to work on. I mean, it's completely determined by how you move it around. I mean, your machine is always making like this, this, um, you know, it's always stabbing your fabric. So that's kind of halting it and moving it as you go. So that's going to, that's going to help regulate it. Um, so my, I have my, um, I put my machine, I set it to zero, but all that's doing is making the, the presser foot not move or not the presser foot, the feed dog. So the feed dogs is what that, those are those jagged edge bottom, um, things. That's what pulls your fabric along. So that's what determines stitch length. When you change the stitch length on your machine, it's changing how much the feed dogs are moving. I just set it to zero, or you can just lower the feed dogs. Yeah, it doesn't matter exactly that, Gretchen. It shouldn't matter. Um, if you're lowering, lowering your feed dogs, then there's nothing there to move it forward except for your, yourself. Um, so, so it shouldn't matter at all, the stitch length, if your feed dogs are down. My feed dogs don't go down. <laughs> They're still stuck. So I have my stitch length set at zero because then the feed dogs are just going up and down. They're not, they're not pulling anything along. All right, so there's the repair on the bottom and then the repair on the top here. Again, we are going to lose a quarter inch of that. So again, I, I don't think you'll even notice that, that there's a repair, but all right. So this guy's ready. <laughs> That's one of four. So let's, let's see what other repairs we might need to do. Um, the poofy ones are the ones that need the most. Okay. This one needs a couple. So we definitely need to go down here. I think this is the biggest gap that we have. Ugh, I think this could use it. I don't know about the top. The top might be I think I better do all three of these. So the ones that we're repairing though right now, these are the ones that we did use the double batting. Um, so it's even poofier, which means it uses even more fabric. So it's pulling even more fabric with every, every stitch. Um, so let there's fa less fabric on the edges to deal with. So let's just do this. I'm going to do this with the short ones again. Um, it won't look as nice as that nice long strip, but you know, all these other ones, we had enough fabric. So um, let's, let's start here and then I'll sew these guys on right away and then we'll press them all. So again, lining up with the fabric that's too short, I, I'm not, I'm not lining it up to the actual edge. I'm actually, I'm lining it up to the, to the edge of the fabric, the top fabric. For the whole quilt, Jane. So Jane's asking how much fabric do we need for the backing? I do, I did not figure that out. So I am doing, I, it depends how big you're doing your quilt. So I'm doing, I'm going to do, uh, let's see, we have these five sections of four. So that's actually like 20 blocks. I'm going to do 20 blocks by 20 blocks because there's a hundred blocks in the splendid sampler to quilt along. Um, but I also have sashing. So that's a half of an inch between every block. So that's going to add up. Um, and then it depends if you want to put a border on or not. If you put a border on, then you'll need even more fabric. So um, it all kind of depends on, on that. So if I don't do a border, so I'll have like basically 
five, um, five by, th by 13. So what's, what's five times 13? I don't even know. Um, so I'll have that as my length and width, give or take an inch. Um, if I do sashing around the edge, All right, there's that first one. I'm going to just jump up to, to these other two right away. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, let's do... I'm kind of winging this whole thing. Like we're going just bit by bit. So I have not even figured that out yet. I'm kind of under the idea that if I run it out of, if I run out of backing fabric, then I'll just sew some of these pieces together, like scrap pieces from this project and, and make up the rest of the batting. All right, there's this repair. Need another sashing piece. Or not sashing, another uh, leader. Ooh, we got a new color here. Okay. Thanks for letting me take the extra time to do these funny little leaders. I think it'll be pretty neat when these are all done. So what I'm doing is I'm just making basically a, a library of um, half what will end up being half square triangles. And then I'm hoping to sew all of these together at some point. Okay, good to go. Cut, cut. That guy's done. So in theory, I should press this first, but I'm going to just finger press it. And then I'm going to sew the, oop, sew the other one on here. Yeah, this one's, this one's annoying. All right, we're going to go right there, start and stop. I guess we're just going to kind of lift up a little bit get started. We're kind of starting in the middle here. Okay. Again, I'm aligning it with the fabric. <laughs> Barbara, you got it down. Watching me on the computer and looking up the Robert Kaufman app. Was it the, oh wait, no. Hoffman Fabrics or Robert Kaufman? I, I didn't catch what it was. Is that an, an app that, that helps with um, calculating backings and stuff? Because that's pretty rad. All right, another one of these. Once my little bin of these gets too full, we'll have to start um, cutting, cutting them and pressing them into the half square triangles. That that'll be fun. You could even start sewing them into something. Little patches. Come on, guys. Sew this guy too close. All right. Now we can press all these open and then trim them, and we should be good to go with this block. So those are the two blocks that probably need the most repairs. I think um, one of the other one needs needs a repair, but then that's it. So tonight we'll probably just finish up uh, all these repairs that we're doing. And uh, then uh, tomorrow we'll make sure we have enough strips. I think I might need to cut some more of these sashing strips because we're using a lot of them up now. Um, and we can cut the, the back sashing. I have a few of these yellow scraps yet. Um, that we'll use for that, I think. Oh, there's an RK on the logo. Okay, that's Robert Kaufman. So uh, quilting, oh, quilting calc calculator. Quilting calculator by Robert. Oh, it's Robert, Robert Kaufman. All right, cool. I'll have to check that out. They know what they're doing over there.
yeah, there's a there's Hoffman Fabrics and then there's Robert Kaufman. <laughs> two different two different fabric companies. All right, there we are. First little trim, and then let's get this guy up here. All our little excess. This is why I thought it was kind of like paper piecing, because we always end up with these extra little scraggles. All right, and this edge here. Okie doke. Let's check this one out. All right, here we are. Just right up here, this little border. Um, oh, we did a decent job. <laughs> I didn't look at this, but look, we didn't cut off our point there, so that's good. We still got the point on our tree. And then we got this, look, this was quite a bit here, but again, it, it won't look like hardly anything once we have it sewn in. All right, there's that one. And uh, we have these two more blocks, but I think only one of them, like this one I didn't think, Oh wait, maybe this one we did need a repair on. Actually, I think this is um this is quite a big area, but I think it's just enough that we that we'll get it in that quarter inch. So I might not even do anything to that. Eh, I don't know. That one's borderline. I think this one was worse. Oh yeah, this one was this whole top really. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to just go along the whole entire top. I don't know if I have enough fabric for that with two two pieces here. So I'm going to take two of these uh, sashing strips. Let's see, will that, that even work? Because we lose a quarter inch. We'll lose a half inch overall. Oh wait, wrong edge. Same distance though. <laughs> Yeah, it probably won't go all the way to the edge. Should we do, should we even do it this way then? Maybe this one, maybe we'll do two separate. So this one I'm going to do separately on this because this, this edge really needs it. Um, and then we're probably okay here. Yeah, and then I might just put an, an additional one right there. So them as separate pieces. I'll sew them right after each other though. Yeah, if it's related to Robert Kaufman, then I would definitely just do, and in the apps, I would do a search for Robert Kaufman, and it would probably come up right away. Robert Kaufman calculator or something. All right, I'm not really paying attention to if I'm clipping corners or not, but oh well. All right, there's the first one. Oh, I should have probably laid this on here already. There, just in time. Ooh, this is getting real bulky right here. Okay, let's get this guy up here again. Okay, let's press those and uh, I think we might just leave it there. I don't think we're going to repair that that other one, the one with the kitty on. I think we're going to I think we're gonna call that just enough. Oh, you're right, I could do an eighth inch seam. I've been kind of doing just a quarter inch seam, but you're right, an eighth inch seam um, would have done the job just as well. Yeah, because I, I really clipped this corner here. You're totally right. Oh, well. That one was gonna get clipped regardless because we it ended up being too small. But it'll be just fine yet. This looks nice though, this looks like a legit like curve going over here so that's cool all right let's trim these and um i think we'll call it a night then we got our four pieces prepped and then tomorrow again we'll cut ourselves some more of these white pieces and we'll also cut our uh binding strip basically for the for the batting or the backing piece the yellow 
All right, there's our repair for, for this guy. Um, I, I feel definitely better um, knowing I don't have to really worry about those seam allowances anymore. So this is the one that we're just gonna keep. It, it is a little bit of an edge there, but I'll just, um, I'll just be wary of it. And then the other two, um, this one, this one we had a lot of repairs. But again, it's gonna not look like anything. And then this one, oh yeah, and we had the whole bottom edge here. <laughs> That's what we get for the super poofy batting. But again, like next time we'll try basting that all down first. See how that goes. Alrighty, I am going to uh, flip you guys around and we'll call it an evening. Hello, so I think, yeah, I think this is gonna work perfectly fine. Uh, so this is what you guys can do if the blocks end up being too small. Uh, next time we will try basting it all down and if that's super effective, like maybe we should try with the double batting again and the single batting just to see the difference. But if that works, um, if that if that solves all our issues, then, uh, then I'm gonna be doing it from now on for sure. Uh, we should do it a test with uh, four blocks that um, are pieced or at least has one pieced block because it's the pieced ones that we had to trim, uh, trim to size to the six and a half inches. Those are the ones that have been pulled in a little bit. But I think we're good to go with these guys. So we will start getting these turned into actual pieces of a larger quilt uh, tomorrow. I'm pretty excited for that. So awesome. I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. Uh, I may have some newsletters going out later this week. So be sure to get on the newsletter list. You can do that by going to penguinandfish.com. There's a, a free pattern um, and there's a pop-up that comes up, uh, sign up and you know, then there's like the little newsletter area, all those places will get you to the newsletter um, and you'll get a free pattern as well. Uh, and I will be here again tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Have a great evening.